Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Have I used that intro too many times? Yes, I have. But guess what? This is revolutionary, people. It's not, I mean, it's not revolutionary. But here's the problem with modern stage lighting. Okay, get on my grumpy, crotchety, uh, old man, you know, pose. Back in the day when I started with lighting, all we had was par cans and ellipsoidals and incandescent lights. And when we turned off the dimmer rack, we brought everything to zero. They didn't draw any power. They weren't running. They weren't putting hours on the electronics and bringing them closer to the end of their life. Arg, 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 arg. Today's lights are just too fancy and they just stink. Wrong. So the truth is that when the world moved to LED based sources and moving heads, even discharge moving heads uh, from conventional lights, we came into having a problem. And that problem that we have is that when you're not using your stage lighting, which for a lot of stages is a lot of time when you have 168 hours a week, it's, you know, at least half of those for a lot of places. Um, you really want to, and you need to turn off those fixtures when you're not using them. In fact, many manufacturers now include this in their manuals, in their literature. Why? Well, because any LED fixture like this little par I put on the table in front of me, moving lights, you know, any of that stuff, it's not really designed to run 24 seven. I mean, it can, and often uh, they can have that kind of duty cycle, you know, modern LED fixtures where you can put them in a hotel lobby. You can put them in a storefront. You can run them 24 seven, but if you're not using them 24 seven, you should not leave them powered 24 seven. Why? It's just putting wear on the electronics. It's making them last less time. So the best thing to do when you buy new fixtures, is have a way to shut them off. Now, if you're in a larger facility and maybe you had an integrator come in and, and build out your system, you probably have relays available. Or if you're going from an older dimmer rack um, that's still in good condition, you may be able to get relay modules that slide into that rack and turn your lights on and off. But for the rest of us, for people in small venues, for people who, you know, on their own are, are switching over with a local electrician, you know, an old broken dimming system to modern LEDs and moving lights, what do you do? Well, over the years, we've had a number of relays that we really like, and they all had drawbacks of some sort, okay? Like, like one, um, a very popular unit, the color source relay, good unit, but if you're not in a fully ETC system where you have something that uh, is a good RDM controller, then uh, it's hard to set up and change the modes. There's no menu, there's no buttons on it, um, etc. Similarly, the ETC, um, what is it called? The ETC uh, Foundry Relay, I forget exactly the model number, um, UPFM2, doesn't matter, um, RP2, no. Um, those ones are good, we like them, they're very reliable but you have to have an electrician to install them um, and even then setting the dmx address or the mode of it is kind of annoying because you have like one button and this cryptic light that flashes at you etc so for years i've been waiting for somebody to come out with a relay that's easy for the average person to set up um, easy for somebody to set up because that's how you're going to use it enter the netron rp2 from obsidian control systems Okay, this little box here, our friend here, is simple. Hardwired DMX5 pin in and through. True one power input and two true one power outputs for a maximum uh, combined output of 16 amps. Um, now I believe, let's just read the back of it real quick. No, it is 16 amps. I thought it was 15, it's 16. Um, so anywho. What this box does is allows you to turn off the lights and, and other electronics, you know, DMX splitters, stuff like that, in your facility when you're not using it. 
And this can easily prolong the life of your fixtures, probably at least double what they would have lived otherwise. There's a lot of factors that go into it, but at the end of the day, you will get years of more life out of your fixtures if you're in a permanently installed setting and you install relays, okay? This is the Netron RP2. I wanna show you how it works because I think if you are spending on your lights, um, you know, more than say $200 a fixture, <clears throat> even a hundred, no more than $200 a fixture say, okay? At that point, it is so worth it to get some of these. I mean, even if you're buying inexpensive like LED PARs, honestly, you know, yes, these are the cost of a few PARs, but this is an industrial commercially built really high quality device it's going to last a really long time and if you're buying cheap pars and they're like 50 watts each by the time you get to 15 amps at 120 volts you know that's like probably 15 or 20 fixtures you can do the math and tell me in the comments that i'm wrong but it's a bunch of fixtures that are protected say you know say for those cheap pars you're spending you know a few hundred dollars on this rp2 and it costs you, you know, $20 a fixture, but you double the life of your fixture. Like that's a no brainer, right? So how does it work? Well, we're going to plug it in real quick. Using the included power country one cable. And then it's going to fire up and light up for us. Okay. On the screen, this is my first time using one of these, uh, by the way, it is going to show us a few things. Okay, actually, let me go ahead and uh, zoom a little bit so that we can see it just a little bit closer. Hold on a second. So what we see on the menu is basically that we have two outputs and they're both currently set to off. I'm just going to go ahead, actually, I bet there's something happening on DMX address one. So I'm going to plug in DMX real quick to the DMX port on the front of the unit. And then boom, looks like both uh, address one and two of DMX are set to be on. So that unit has just clicked on based on the active DMX coming in. Okay, so out of the box basically, hey, DMX address one, when it uh, sees that, that address, it's gonna turn that on. Okay, let's look a little bit more into the menu, see what we've got. So, we've got our first menu called preset. We can set it to DMX detect, so I believe that's what it's set to. That just when it sees any DMX, it's rolling. Um, then we have DMX relay. We'll set our start address. And in this case, I've got one set up at 83. Excellent. So now my two relays turned off, you may have heard a little click and the status light turned off. So I've basically got two modes on this unit, on the RP2. I can just have it go, hey, when it sees DMX, turn everything on. And so that works for a lot of facilities. Like if you've got a facility where you turn on a console, it sends DMX to the lights and that's the only time they get DMX, you're good to go. If you have like a wall panel system uh, that's tied into DMX, doing some architectural controls, etc., cetera, um, then you're gonna find that um, you'll probably have DMX to your fixtures all the time. And in that case, what you wanna do is set it to a DMX address like I just did. Then go over to my console, which is behind me here. You won't see it in the view. And I'm just gonna grab my fixture here. I click it on. I hear a little click from my RP2 and it powers on. Okay, now, next step. How do we get power out of the RP2 to our fixtures? Um, well, this can be the part where sometimes, especially if you're budget conscious, this can get a little bit annoying. Okay, the cleanest way, obviously, probably obviously, is to get out from these True One outputs to get a True One jumper to a True One fixture. You can also go true one to a blue power con if your fixture is blue power con, blue and white, and then a, a power con extension out of that uh, to your first fixture. Or what we like to do for a lot of our users is we have in stock, um, and this is something uh, that's a little bit hard to find, but we have these 12 gauge um, 
little adapters to just take you power con to a straight regular old Edison plug. And so we plug that in. Find our output, plug it in. Find our fixture right here. This is just a LED par, the Dominar par S that we have at Learning Stage Lighting Gear. And what you might be able to see, maybe not, is it did turn on. There you go. We'll, we'll give it some light so we can see it. Boom! Like that. And then when we want to turn it off on our console, boom! We click it off, click it back on, click. The fixture takes a minute to boot up because that's what fixtures do. Hey, it's on. And just like that, you're saving so many hours on your fixtures, you're saving so much time, so much electrical wear and tear on those internal components and making them last so much longer. Um, and so at the end of the day, whether you set it up to a DMX address, which I would typically save to your default mode when your console boots up um, or have a queue that fires it, or if you just set it so that when these detect DMX, off they go, you'll be ready to go off to the races. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do want to see more about the Netron RP2, how it works, um, get these adapters that we have at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. They're a little bit hard to find elsewhere, um, but we've got them. Uh, all of this is linked below. And we'll also link to our full guide to setting up the Netron RP2. It's gonna tell you everything you need to know in order to get this guy set up, the different modes that it has, and uh, really how to make it work. We'll see you guys in that next video. Thanks.